The people who died and lost their homes, it, this happened to them because they are poor. We are mm. in one of the richest spaces, not just in London, but in the world. Repeated requests are ignored. There is no way that rich people live in a building without adequate fire safety. Everyone mm. I spoke to who was out there couldn't hear alarms. There was no sprinkler mm. system. There was. Oh, it was like pitch black and it was thick black smoke. You couldn't see anything. As soon as we left, I could see like light. So I knew that we, there was hope and like we could do it. And then as soon as, and then they quickly rushed with my brother, they put him in an ambulance. And then as soon as they, one of the firemen lifted me on his shoulder and he had the big shield just to assure that nothing would drop because there was pieces of the building that were dropping. Mm. I think all families, children and parents should have a nice, warm, cosy home. I just want like everyone in the world to like have a house at least. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's here, and today I'm back with a and I cat with some true crime video. Today I'm going to be doing the story of the pure evil, the Greenfell Tower London fire tragedy disaster. A deep dive into this tragedy, capitalism, true crime, etc. This true crime case was featured in a number of TV and media. One of them is a TV documentary that came out in 2018 called Greenfell. But before we get started into the story, all my videos related to this topic will be linked down in the video description down below and also linked on the screen right now if you'd like to check them out. So let's get started into the deep dive story of this capitalism true crime tragedy. Greenfield Tower was part of the Lancaster West Estate, a council complex north of Kingston. The 24-story tower block was designed in 1967. The tall building contained 121 bedroom and two bathroom flats. Like many other tower blocks in the UK, Greenfield Tower was designed to be operated under a stay-put policy in the event of a fire. The idea was that if a fire broke out in one flat, thick walls and fire doors would contain the fire long enough for the fire service to bring it under control. Only those in the affected dwelling would be expected to evacuate during a fire. The building was designed under the assumption that a full evacuation would never be necessary. There was no centrally activated fire alarm, fire sprinklers, and only a single central staircase. Unlike in many other countries, UK regulations do not require a second. In 2010, a fire broke out in the lobby and was quickly extinguished. Residents had expressed concern and significant safety concerns before the fire started. Twelve years earlier, Twelve years earlier, problems criticizing the council and KCTMO for neglecting fire safety standards and building maintenance. In 2013, the group publicized a 2012 fire risk assessment by a KCTMO health and safety officer, which recorded safety concerns. Firefighting equipment at the tower had not been checked for up to four years. On-site fire extinguishers had expired, and some had the word condemned written all over them because they were so old. January 2016, Gag warned that people might be trapped in the building if a fire broke out again. Pointing out that the building had only one entrance and one exit, the corridors that had been allowed to fill with rubbish and old mattresses that needed to be thrown away. Shortly before 1 a.m., a fire broke out on the second floor of the Greenfield Tower. The blaze rapidly became a towering inferno and blazed its way at the engulfed all 24 floors on the block. Due to the fire doors not closing and sealing properly, smoke began to spread from the affected flats and rooms into the lobby and eventually at some point began to enter the stairwell. Reports by the fire described the fire hellish scenes of residents pleading for help and flashing phone torches in upper scorchy windows, holding their children out windows, and some of them even jumped to the desk to escape the flames as emergency workers desperately battled to rescue those trapped inside, taking 200 firefighters and 40, and 40 fire engines, more than seven hours to extinguish the blaze. This resulted in the deaths of 72 people in the days following the blaze. British media outlets revealed that the fire was exacerbated by external material that easily catches fire and is highly flammable and facilitated the quick and deadly spread of the blaze and the flames. A report from the New York Times shows the wrapping of the flammable material around the apartment building like the 
Glean Fell Tower is actually banned in the United States and several other European countries. The dollar still applied the flammable material because of a cost-cutting deal made with British politicians who chose profits over lives. It was determined at the time that the cost-cutting concerns outweighed the safety risks posed by the flammable material. On September 21st, 2018, the coroner Fiona Wilcox expressed concern for the long-term physical health effects of the victims and the emergency service workers and fire workers exposed to smoke and dust during inhaled during the fire and subsequent cleanup. Those affected could be at increased risk of conditions such as cancer, COPD, and asthma. The tower is also known to have contained asbestos and other carcinogen toxins. Tenants had reportedly complained about the electrical power surges throughout the building, causing appliances such as refrigerators to smoke and such an electrical surge may have set the stage for the fire. Local activists have warned for years that the building was a capitalist death trap, but neither the psychopathic, greedy, money-hungry landlord or the government, both of whom knew the dangers and who didn't give a f flying fuck about anyone, took any heed. The blood of the victims of capitalism is on their hands. Capitalism has consistently failed to provide a decent standard of housing and living for working people. Tragedies like the Greenfell Fire are a direct result of this. The Firefighters Union has placed the blame for the Greenfell Tower Inferno squarely on central government and political decisions made in the service of a social and economic system driven by capitalism profits and greed being driven by an agenda of deregulation, privatization, and marketization as a result of symptoms of loose regulation, even self-regulation, were introduced into the building industry in particular alongside drastic cuts in the public sector, including the fire service. In the 10 years before the Greenfield disaster, the number of full-time firefighters was cut by 22%. The cuts undoubtedly hampered the ability of the fire department in both the run-up to the Greenfield disaster and the ability to respond to it. The closure of the Ninth Bridge and Westminster stations would have delayed the arrival of vital resources by some minutes. The union document states that events given to the inquiry previously showed that all three clattering manufacturers involved with the tower disaster exploited the flexibility and potential loopholes in the testing and certification regime to pellets products that caused the disaster. Survivors were left sleeping under the Westway flyover for over 10 days. Others were housed in unsuitable hotels, with large families sharing only one room, forced to move shelter every day. People who had lost absolutely everything in the fire, besides the clothes they were wearing on their backs the night of the fire, were rejected for state benefits. Some survivors were eventually paid the smallest hardship amount fu fund of a measly 500 pounds, or even just 100 pounds. Others were denied all right together. This all happened in a city that's filled with empty houses belonging to rich landlords and rich people in general. These remained empty while the residents of Greenfield Tower suffered the capitalism misery in the surrounding areas and were made homeless by this tragedy. Instead of the material support required following the fire, what was provided was the police van's baton. Survivors had immediate need for financial and emotional support for safe and adequate shelter. Instead, what they got were armed police patrolling the area and only to be met with police commands to move along and get out of the area. The whole area was heavily policed. All well, the real criminals, the capitalist pigs involved in the deadly tragedy who caused the whole situation, were removing any mention of their role from their websites. These are the victims of capitalism. This is a capitalism-caused tragedy, and it's disgusting that people still get away with this stuff.